Good morning. Welcome to Living Grace Kids. We're going to begin today with a time of worship. I'll see you back here in a minute. As scouts from the land of Moab watched the multitudes of Israelites moving toward their territory, they feared the worst. They had heard about the God of Israel and what he did to deliver this peculiar people out of Egypt, and they had witnessed the destruction of other neighboring inhabitants who stood in Israel's way. They knew it was just a matter of time before Israel would challenge them too. When the king of Moab received word of the impending danger, he quickly came up with a plan that he hoped would weaken the threat. There was a man named Balaam, who was well known to have magical powers. It was said that he could invoke divine blessings, but that he could also cast destructive curses on anyone he chose. So the king sent messengers carrying great treasure, hoping to secure Balaam's services in cursing the people of Israel. 
Balaam was pleased at the gift and proud that his prestige demanded such a price. I will talk to the God of Israel, he told the king, and tomorrow I will let you know what can be done. But God was not pleased that Balaam was conspiring with the enemy to curse his special people. So he spoke to Balaam, Do not go with the messengers to curse my people, because I have blessed them. But the king persisted and promised even more treasure, an offer Balaam could not refuse. Balaam got up early in the morning and began his journey to Moab. He was so focused on acquiring the great reward offered by the king, he could not see that God stood against him. He could not see that an angel of the Lord stood in the center of the road waving a sword in the air with the intent to kill. The only one to see the terrific sight was his faithful donkey. In terror, she ran off the road, refusing to press forward, and finally threw herself into a wall, crushing Balaam's leg. Still blind to the danger, Balaam repeatedly beat the poor donkey for resisting him. Finally, the donkey collapsed to the ground in despair, hopeless to communicate the threat to her master. But just then, God performed a miracle and gave the abused creature the ability to speak her mind. What have I done to you that you would mercilessly beat me this way? She cried out. Balaam, still blinded by gain and now further blinded with anger, spoke back to the donkey. Because you mock me, he said. If I had a sword in my hand, I would kill you right now. The donkey continued her plea. In all the years you have ridden me, have I ever once done anything like this? The mad sorcerer thought for a moment, then replied, No. All at once, God opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel standing in his way, sword in hand, ready to kill. He fell on his face to the ground. The angel spoke to him. Why did you continue to beat on your donkey? I have been sent here to stop you, and if it weren't for that poor creature fighting to avoid me, I would have surely killed you, but spared your donkey. Balaam confessed. I am wrong. If you want me to, I will return. But the angel commanded him to go and warned him. Only say to the king exactly what God tells you to say. Three times, and in three different places high on the hillside, the king pressed Balaam to cast a destructive curse against the people of Israel. But Balaam could only speak God's words, and God's words were only blessings. All the wealth, power, and determination the enemy could muster could not overcome the intense love God had for his beloved people, and God's great act of turning the enemy's curse into a blessing would not be his last. One day he would send a Messiah who would destroy Satan's curse and deliver all of mankind once and for all. Well, that's it for this week. Don't forget your activity sheets are down in the description box. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will see you again next week. Bye.